Every hardware store shelf is stacked with miracle sealants that promise decades of protection. And yet beams from the Middle Ages still stand exposed to rain, frost, salt air, and insects, quietly mocking those labels. That's not nostalgia. That's performance. Medieval craftsmen figured out a wood treatment so effective that even after World War II, restoration experts were still borrowing it to save ships, bridges, and buildings modern chemistry couldn't protect on its own. This isn't folklore. This is applied material science, learned the hard way, and it still works. If you care about history, durability or self-reliance, this is one of those techniques you don't just learn, you absorb it. Why medieval wood had to survive or people didn't. In the medieval world, wood wasn't optional. It was infrastructure. Homes, roof beams, ships, carts, tools, storage vessels, even water systems depended on timber. Stone was expensive and rare. Metal was precious. If wood failed, communities failed. Rot was the enemy. So were insects. Fungal decay could destroy a beam from the inside out. Medieval craftsmen didn't have the luxury of replacement on demand. They had to make wood last because, well, failure meant starvation, exposure or collapse. So they watched nature closely. They noticed which trees lasted longer, which beams survived storms, and, you know, which ships came back intact after years at sea. Over generations, they refined a process that worked with the structure of wood instead of fighting it. You know, the treatment wasn't a coating, but a transformation. Modern sealants, well, they just sit on the surface. That's their weakness, really. They crack, they peel, and, um, moisture gets trapped underneath. And before you know it, rot accelerates unseen. Medieval treatment was honestly quite different. It aimed to change the wood from the inside out. The core elements were, let me see, controlled heat, slow drying, and deep oil penetration. Heat opened the wood's pores, oil filled them, and, you know, time locked everything in place. Linseed oil was, without a doubt, the backbone. Not because it was trendy or anything, but because it polymerizes. When exposed to oxygen, it hardens inside the wood fibers themselves. Medieval craftsmen often heated the oil or applied it while the timber was warm from a kiln or fire. That detail matters, you know. Warm wood drinks oil deeply. Cold wood, on the other hand, resists it. Sometimes resins from pine or fir were added. These weren't decorative, not at all. They increased water resistance and hardened as they cooled, creating a flexible but resilient internal barrier. Beeswax occasionally joined the mix for surface durability, especially on outdoor elements. The result wasn't shiny. It was dense, darkened, and alive. Wood that resisted water without becoming brittle. Wood that moved with temperature instead of cracking under it. Preparation was where the real skill lived. The treatment didn't start with oil. It started in the forest. Medieval carpenters selected timber with tight growth rings. Slow-grown trees were denser and naturally more resistant to moisture. Knots were avoided when possible. Grain direction mattered. 
Then came drying, not kiln blasting like modern lumber yards, slow air drying, often under cover, sometimes for months or even years. The goal wasn't speed, it was stability. Moisture left the wood gradually, reducing internal stress. Only after that did the oiling begin, and it wasn't rushed. Coats were applied incrementally. One layer, time to soak, time to cure, then another. Each pass pushed protection deeper. This wasn't sealing wood, it was saturating it. That patience is why medieval beams outlast many modern ones by centuries. Why does this still outperform modern sealants? Well, longevity is the obvious answer. But, you know, it's not the only one. This method doesn't rely on toxic chemicals. Linseed oil, resin and wax are biodegradable. That really matters if you're building near soil, water or food systems. It's also repairable. Modern coatings often require stripping and reapplication. But medieval treated wood can be refreshed with another oiling even years later without removing anything. And it scales. Whether you're treating a tool handle or a structural beam, the principles remain the same. Heat, oil and time. That's why restoration teams still use variations of this method on historic ships and timber frame buildings. After World War II, when massive reconstruction efforts exposed the failures of quick industrial fixes, traditional oil treatments quietly proved more reliable in the long term. This knowledge, well, it's actually quite relevant in the real world today. You don't need a medieval workshop to use this method right now. Start with properly dried wood. If it's green, you really need to let it season. Rushing this step, honestly, ruins everything. Next, gently heat the wood. Not scorch it, not burn it, just warm enough that it feels hot to the touch but not smoking. A kiln is ideal, but a wood stove works too. Even controlled sunlight can help on smaller pieces. Apply boiled linseed oil liberally. Let it soak, then wipe away the excess. Wait. Repeat the process. Three to five coats isn't excessive. It's actually correct. For outdoor applications, you know, it's wise to melt a small amount of pine resin or beeswax into the oil. This increases weather resistance without turning the surface brittle. Fence posts treated this way, well, they last dramatically longer. Tool handles resist cracking. Garden furniture survives seasons without peeling finishes. Even wooden water containers benefit because the oil stabilizes the fibers instead of sealing them shut. Survivalists value this because, honestly, it removes dependency. No store-bought chemicals, no proprietary formulas, just materials humans have trusted for centuries. Why patience beats innovation more often than we admit? Modern culture, you see, worships speed. Medieval craftsmanship worshipped outcome. That difference shows up in the material record. Beams that survived plagues, wars, climate shifts and neglect. Ships that crossed oceans repeatedly. Tools passed down generations. This wood treatment wasn't accidental. It was the result of failure observed and corrected over hundreds of years. That's a longer testing cycle than any modern product will ever see. When you use this method, you're not copying history. You're participating in it. 
Why this matters to History HQ viewers specifically? History isn't just dates and battles. It's technique. It's problem-solving. It's understanding why something worked and why it lasted. This medieval wood treatment is a perfect example of practical intelligence preserved in material form. It connects craftsmanship, survival and science long before those words were separated. If you're restoring, building, prepping, or simply curious about how pre-industrial societies solved real problems, this is knowledge worth keeping alive. And if you want more deep dives like this, where history becomes usable instead of decorative, make sure you subscribe to History HQ and share this with someone who still believes modern always means better. Sometimes the past already solved it.